Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Devon Franklin. You should go see The Forge because it's going to inspire you. It's going to inspire your family. You can take the oldest to the youngest to The Forge. So please go see this movie in theaters. Put Hollywood on notice that you want more content like this. Your ticket is a vote. So if you want more faith-based content for your family at theaters, please go see The Forge in theaters. Buy your ticket. Cast your vote. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Well, greetings, everybody. Lee Michaels here. And as always, we look forward to the opportunity to share with you on this, our platform. This is my story, of course, for our listeners on Heaven 600. We greet you also, and we'll talk more about you guys later. But right now, we're dealing with uh, the visual, if you would, because we have joining us a dynamic and uh, really uh, a, a very talented young man whose star is rising and is rising fast. And we're so grateful to have the opportunity to have him be with us. His name is Aspen Kennedy. Uh, you've probably seen him in some of his offerings in film already and didn't even know who he was, but we've got him here for you today. And Aspen, it's so good to have you with us, man. How are you? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me here. It's good to be here, bro. Yeah, not that you know, Aspen. I mean, you're young. You're youngster compared to me. <laughs> uh, 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 but but yet, uh, a lot has been happening for you uh, in in recent years, and yeah. particularly with this new movie called The Forge, which we're going to talk about. But before we go there, uh, just for the sake of our audience, what is your story? Man, my story is a true testament to God's faithfulness, man. Like, uh, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, my father, I didn't grow up with him. However, God was my heavenly father, and he's done tremendous things in my life. And I'm just grateful to be that example in the vessel, man. Yeah. Now, 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 um, tell us how you found your way into film. Yes, I went to Jackson State University. I was a major in communications, but I realized that I didn't want to you know, do it. I didn't want to be a news reporter. I didn't want to be in, in journalism. However, I knew I wanted to do something with television. So my sophomore year, I took a class and it was recommended by a total stranger uh, who I met at my job at the Apple store. And it was like, hey, have you, you do have your schedule for next semester? If not, you should register for this class. So I'm like, okay, I actually do need an art elective. And when I took that class, that was the first class that I truly felt like, okay, this is what I want to do in my life. And ever since then in 2016, I've, I've been pursuing it full time. Have you seen that stranger again? Yup, so she actually follows me on Instagram and she's like, man, it's so interesting to see where God is taking you. And I was like, man, I'm so forever grateful for you sharing that word to take that class because literally had no clue where it was gonna lead, but God knew, so I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. You know, uh, what came to mind when you said that, you know, there's yeah. passage in scriptures about beware of strangers you meet unaware because they may be angels. angels uh, could it be yeah. that she, God has sent her as an angel to be in, uh, an angel in your life? Truly grateful, and it's, it's a testament to, again, God ordered my steps to be able to, I needed an art elective and I didn't want to take music appreciation or art appreciation. I was like, God, I need a class. And somebody randomly came in and was like, hey, you got your sem uh, schedule for next semester? I was like, no, nah, I don't. She's like, you should take this class. And it happened to be that one art elective that would have went towards my course credit. So it literally worked out perfect, man. So again, praise God for that, man. Now, even as I listen to you, Aspen, I, you know, I hear I hear your faith. I hear that you're a man of faith, and I applaud yeah. that. A young brother in the faith is always encouraging, especially yeah. in this day and time. Uh, yeah. How hard, or is it hard to juggle your faith and your career pursuits? It's really, and I say this humbly, man, it's really not because God has shown me from the very beginning of my career that, you know, every testimony, wherever, any, any set I've ever been on, it has a testimony tied to it as far as God's faithfulness or him opening the door for me. So a lot of people get to see the, the, the results of, man, you've worked on this show and you've worked with this person and you get in the right. movies versus like, I'm like, God, like, I, I can look back and look at the personal, private, specific prayers of where I asked God to do things and he superseded my expectations. So it will be weird to go forward to act like, you know, God didn't do this to say, oh yeah, I'm grateful, but I can't talk about that versus like, people are excited about, especially the Forge as well. And I'm like, yo, this has truly been an answer prayer and I have to give the glory back to him because he opened the door. You know, I, I, it, there's so much that's in my responsibility and control, but in terms of his, his orchestration and his authority, He's done it all, so I, I'm just I'm just grateful to be to experience it. Man. Exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ever think or ask, he, according to the power, that's, right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, bro. So, so um, uh, 
when you landed your first role, what, yeah. the first one was what was the uh, what was the first one? Yeah, so it was uh, my first network network television show. It was called Queen Sugar on uh, Oprah Winfrey Network. I actually booked that uh, a couple weeks before I graduated. I went to Jackson State University, and just uh-huh. small testimony behind that. When I first got the news from my agent, he told me, he's like, hey man, congratulations, cast and respect out and ask for your availability. So in my excitement, I told my professors, my my family, my friends, the, the uh-huh. university did an e-blast. Lo and behold, a couple of days later, I'm like, okay, I haven't gotten the dates yet. Like, when do I need to be in New Orleans to shoot? He was like, actually casting, you know, the network went in a different direction. So you don't have the role. I'm like, oh, they just asked my availability. Like, you know. so bro, that, 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 that blew me in a different way because I literally had a night class that night and it was just so overwhelming to the point where I skipped class, I went home and I cried. And then I had one more class <laughs> after that. And as I left my apartment, before I turned onto the street, I said, God, I know you won't embarrass me. And literally a week later, my my agent circled back and was like, "Hey, actually, Casting, hit you back up. The role is indeed yours." So just even that faith testimony of giving me something that I was excited about, but not that I went out and I wasn't humble in the moment versus just excited, but showing me like, sure. "Hey, God, I need you alone the entire way." And that, and that was a stepping stone in my faith to show me like, "Hey, it's literally God." The but, but you know, I like your prayer that you you said, "God, I know you would not set me up to be embarrassed." Yeah, I, you know. Yeah. And and that speaks to the measure of faith and trust that you have in God, because uh, quite honestly, there there are others that would not have taken that posture. You know, like, like, God, why are you doing it to me? Why are you setting me up like this? Man, I was like, yo, I'm not, I don't want anybody to think I'm lying. Because, you know, especially when you start off in the industry, you just, you have that 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 sense of doubt or imposter syndrome yeah. of like, okay, if somebody asks me if I'm an actor, what have you been in? I have nothing to show for. So, like, man, I just told all these people, oh, my God, I know sure. you want to embarrass me. And they literally came back a week later to the date and was just like, hey, congratulations, here's the date. So, it's like. Well, God proves himself God, faithful. <laughs> yeah, he proves himself faithful. He does. That is awesome. So, so you know, now you're matriculating in the industry, but you're also matriculating in your your faith growth in the process because God is delivering on each level as yep. you as you make your way. At least that's what I'm hearing. Am I yep. correct? You're correct, man. He's been faithful. Yeah, yeah. So, the Forge, man. Tell us about the Forge. Yes, man. The Forge is such a powerful story. It's in the same cinematic universe as War Room. It came out in 2015, 2016. Powerful film uh, about the power of prayer. And this film also follows suit. This is about discipleship, about mentorship, the importance of uh, pouring into the next generation. And it has so many beautiful names of forgiveness and just, you know, pouring into one another. And and it's really a powerful and timely, uh, timely story right now, man. Now, I saw your role in there, uh, Isaac, right? Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah Wright. Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh, yeah. Interesting name. And yeah. and and I saw you. You trying to act like you had a little hoops with you. Is that legitimate <laughs> or was that acting? Which part was that? The hoops. The hoops. The I basketball. basketball. I, I actually uh, play basketball most of my life. Yeah, I love basketball. Like. Did you uh, play in school? I did high school, and that's the only reason why I went to Jackson State because I had an opportunity to be a walk on. So I was like, man, God, you gave me a dream of basketball okay. for eighteen years. So, so you were right in your nest egg, right you in know. my element, <laughs> right in my element, bro. So, the, the Isaiah, and, and I, I've seen the trailer, and yep. my wife and I were going to see the movie, but oh, I, I wanted to have this conversation with you first because yep. it's going to help me appreciate it even more. Yep. Uh, your character, it centers around your character, and I think uh, um, uh, being a, a, a single in a single parent home, his dad's not there, but dad comes into his life or something like that. Yeah. So again, he's uh he's right out of high school. He's dealing with some uh, abandonment issues from his father. He doesn't have a clear sense of direction for his life, but he does have a praying mother who she doesn't relent in her love towards him and her prayers. But she realizes that he has some growing up to do. He has to be responsible. He has to learn to grow in his faith and his character. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard for her to do that alone with everything else on her shoulders. But God answers her prayer and sends uh, Isaiah, a businessman who gives him a job opportunity, but also takes time to uh, be intentional in teaching him about discipleship and biblical principles. And it changes his life for the better. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that kind of hit a, um, a nerve for me because I came from a single parent home. And, uh, you know, I had a praying mother and, uh, you know, the challenges uh, that I found myself going through in life, early in life, yeah. were tremendous. And so I, I can sensitize even today with uh, especially African-American young men going through those challenges. 
was that part of the message in the storyline to try to pervade that, you know, if, particularly for African American males that, you know, if the dad is not in the home, it does not mean that there can't be a daddy figure in the life. Yeah. Yeah, you, you hit a nail on, man, because truly just showing that regardless of, you know, what people may take away of as far as the dynamics of Isaiah and his father, just the whole themes of forgiveness of you have to let things go and surrender right. things to God for him to make himself known and just making the space for him. But now truly just showing like how Isaiah's life truly turned around when he understood who Christ was, when he understood to, you know, he, he set aside time to be intentional about applying biblical principles to his life and his life changed tremendously. So it's just, it's for everybody, man, in any dynamic when it comes to forgiving others. Great storyline. Again, yeah. personally, I can relate to it. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I even thought about Shaquille, you know, Shaquille O'Neal's testimony, similar situation where uh, someone else st stepped in and, and you know he acknowledged when when Shaquille got his first NBA contract, he acknowledged that father presence in his life. So yeah. we should not diminish or devalue the impact males, African American yeah. males, can have on a young person. And I always try to aspire to encourage yeah. young people because I know that I could be looking at the next me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this movie now, you've got this, you're getting a lot of attention, a lot of positive feedback on this movie, man. And uh, what was your takeaway from, from this experience as it relates to you professionally and yeah. then just personally? What, what was your takeaway from your involvement in this film? Man, personally, just the film came out last Friday, but we had a couple of pre-screenings the last couple of months and just hearing people's testimonies of how God has impacted their hearts after watching this film, it just truly goes to the testament of, I'm grateful to have been a part of it and people haven't been enjoying the performance, but at the very end of it, in the midst, they said, man, like I saw this film and it was so good, but I felt convicted. I gotta get my walk with Christ back. You know, so it's just like hearing people's testimony is so rewarding to me to say, all right, God, I wanna, you know, do great things for you. I want to be able to be a vessel, but it's happening. And I say that humbly of like, man, People are excited, they're entertained, but at the same point, personally, for their own choice, they're thinking, man, I gotta get right with you guys. So he's literally, like his word says, you exalt me, I'll draw me in all to you, not yes. for my own glory, yeah. but they're going right back to him. So I'm just grateful to be- Let uh, your light, bro. yeah, let, let that light shine. go shine. Yeah. yeah that's that's it, man. You know, we're gonna we're gonna share. We're we're talking yep. about the movie. We're gonna share the trailer real quick, and then yep. we're gonna come back and we're gonna kind of wrap up with uh, uh, some personal insights about uh, not only your journey, yep. uh, but things that you can share with others that hopefully might impact their journey. Okay. Absolutely. Your grandfather drove this. My dad told me he was going to fix it up with me. This is the way he left it. Like everything else. You are my son, but I'm giving you one month to find a job, or you can find one of your little friends that's going to let you sleep on their couch for free. Can I help you? I'm just trying to talk to a young lady right here. I need for you to leave my shop right now. I'm gone, and I won't be back either. Right there, your father would do. Well, I ain't him. You acting like him. Boy. It's hard for a woman to call out the man and her son. I just need some prayer support. I'm just trying to see about a job, right? I ain't hit about nothing. You what you a salesman for this company? I'm the president. That's for more. A big part of becoming a man is showing up. Can you do that, Isaiah? You made all these promises. Oh, what? When my sister tells me that she needs prayer support, honey, I bring prayer support. Am I in the right place? Miss Clara! We pray that the Lord will open Isaiah's eyes so that he could see himself the way that the Lord sees him. You're 50 minutes early. It's trying not to be late again. I want to introduce you to a small group of men that mean the world to me. We grow together, we eat together. It's one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. God has forgiven me so much. Who was I to refuse to forgive? Okay, Jesus, I can give it to you. What kind of man do you want to be? And what do you want people to think when they see you coming? 
You only got six of us, seven including Emmett. I'm willing to go to second mile. We can't just walk out and do nothing. Let's roll. If I may be blunt, a lamb stands in front of me. Isaiah, welcome to the fort. I need you to come by here more often. Mm -hmm. Keisha needs you. Tell me what you waiting, what you waiting, what you waiting for. Man, all I can say is I'm chomping at the bit to see the entire movie, and I just want to encourage all of our viewers and our listeners uh, to make sure that you check out uh, uh, the the Forge. The Forge. How did the name come about? So it's truly just knowing, like Forge, you can put something in pressure and fire. Just God's refinement power truly yeah. you come out purified so knowing that it's a group of men who are called that's you know good. they disciple one another and it's called the forge that's good that's good yeah, so now you know you've had quite a tremendous journey particularly accelerated because of of the direction the divine intervention that yeah. sent someone across your path to to plant a seed yeah. that to your benefit and yeah. I, i'll start right there yeah. you 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 acted upon it um yeah. And the case can be made that there are many unfulfilled dreams yeah. because of an inability to act on that moment, the moment. Yeah. No, you're exactly right, man. And it's just a thing where even looking at that moment in my life now is just showing me again God's presence all throughout my life to a point where, you know, I even pray now, God, allow me to grow in discernment and have clarity so I can always be aware of your presence. To be able to not miss moments, even for the future, to say, I can look now and I can tell this is your voice, this is your presence concerning this thing. And um, man, like you said, that definitely was a moment that planted that seed and God has watered it over the years and over the years and he's been faithful and it's been, it's been a journey. And if you had not moved on that moment, man. you would have still been in a yeah. whole different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and 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 your 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 purpose, your sense of destiny, your yeah. fulfillment. Yeah, and it's would have been yeah. dating. Yeah, yeah. So, so what encouragement can you give to others out there who are heads? Because you know, uh, James talks about faith without works, works. is dead. And yeah. you know, the the literal interpretation of that is, I I've got not only I've got to not only trust God and have yeah. faith in God. Yeah. But I've got to be willing to embrace whatever moves or actions I need to take mm -hmm. it, that is commensurate with that. And yeah. so uh, what encouragement could you give to someone out there who's struggling with, although they, they affirm and declare their faith, yeah. but when it comes to being able to courageously take that first step, particularly into the unknown, what words of encouragement can you give them? Man, truly to embrace surrender and know that it's a beautiful thing because a lot of times we may feel like we don't have everything figured out or we don't know what's next or know how to get to the next step in our lives. But just that admission and that acknowledgement of God, I don't know what's next and I need your help gives him all the more room to come in and come into your situation to make himself known. So just truly put when we place our trust in God, like it literally it benefits us as well. That's good. You know, yeah. one of the things that I do in this season of my life, I think I mentioned to you that I, I've retired, but not in the traditional sense. I've retired yeah. to free up time to do more of what I like to do, which is this. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and I do life coaching because that's wow. ministry. I pastor, I'm life coach, and yeah. I do this. And it basically is all congruent. It's all about trying to impact people's lives positively. Um, yep. And one of the things I ask people, I, I ask particularly those who seek my, my uh, counsel, I ask them, what do you envision uh, if you look down the road? What do you see or what would you hope to see in the next three to five years? Yep. Truly for me, um, again, God's continually, uh, his faithfulness and his orchestration. But personally, there's uh, one story that's on my heart that I want to bring to life into films. Uh, and I believe I've been working on it now. So that's like my five year, uh, one of my five year goals for sure. That's good. That's good. Well, yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to get you to circle back once you achieve it. Yeah. And we can celebrate that too. So now the Forge yes. is everywhere, right? Everybody can make sure to some encouraging words. I'll get people to come on out to see the movie. Uh, it's in theaters all across the country now. Yep. And uh, what, what, what final word would you want to offer a, to encourage folks to check out the movie 
Man, I just, my hope is that it touched everyone's hearts. Uh, like I said, it's such a powerful film that supersedes age and generations to a point where everybody will get something. So you can take your entire families, your church, your kids, your sister, your parents, and it will, lit it will literally touch everybody's heart. So I'm excited for everybody to see it. Yeah, you know, and you, you mentioned earlier that you're from Memphis, don't, and I was in yeah. Memphis, and I didn't get a chance, I went to Memphis, I got a chance to go to Bill Street, I got a chance to, of course, the event I was there for, uh, I didn't yeah. get a chance, I got a chance to go to the Lorraine Motel, Motel okay. uh, and the museum. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to get some Memphis barbecue, man. I couldn't no, find man. no Memphis barbecue. You got to go back. You got to go back. I, I got to go back. I'm looking forward to that. Look, Aspen, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much uh, for sharing with us today, encouraging our viewers as well as our listeners and uh, sharing your story, man. And truly, it is uh, uh, it is a testament of faith, uh, particularly yeah. at, at, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 29. 29 a young yes, man but on fire for lord for the lord and uh strong in your faith and you know what that suggests to me man is yeah. there are higher heights and deeper Amen. depths that are still ahead of you because of that strength in your faith and i'm just celebrating you today and i'm going to be watching and look when you come into your kingdom please remember me that's it that's <laughs> Aspen, God bless you, man. Thank you so much for the time, and we look forward Thank to you. hearing more. But right now, we're focused on the Forge. The Forge, that's it. Thank you, bro. All right. That Sweet. was good. All right, yes, man. I, I can take care of that little piece where it blinked okay. out. I don't know what happened. but And I'm going to throw the uh, trailer in there. Okay. And I might, do, I might do a couple little cutaways. Uh, okay. But I'm going to fix it all up, and I'll send it down the pike, and you might get a chance to see it. But uh, if okay. you have it on the East Coast, man, look us up. I will. Absolutely, bro. Yep. All right, my brother. Blessings to you. Thank and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man, because you're on the right track, bro. man. You're going you to make you, some I'm noise. I'm excited for you guys to see it, too. I'm excited. Huh? I said I'm excited for you guys to see it, too. All right. All right, All right. man. God bless you here. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Take care.